Good morning. Um, my name is Rasha Halwa. I'm the director of the Atlantic Council's uh, Empower Me Initiative. I have with me today Maina Shala, the founder and executive chairwoman of De Novo Partners, an independent Middle East focused corporate finance advisory firm. Welcome, Maya. So, Maya, traditionally, foreign investors have been really drawn to the Middle East, targeting a handful of high yield sectors with relatively limited investment risks, notably construction and real estate. And from your perspective, what level of interest or enthusiasm do you observe among these investors for investing in renewables in the Middle East? Thank you, Russia. Pleasure to be here. I think the region has evolved quite substantially from the days where it was only an attractiveness uh, for the type of investments that you have mentioned. We've grown a lot, we've diversified a lot. I think what we're seeing today is that due to the government's initiatives that are very much focused on renewables, very much focused on evolving beyond the traditional hydrocarbon production center that they are, today we're seeing regional governments and organizations and NOCs that are very focused on renewables. So the UAE has made bold announcement saying that they will be targeting a 44% renewable energy diversification by 2050. Saudi has even gone to a next level and announced that they would be going to 50% renewable energy by 2030. And with that, the whole ecosystem around them is evolving towards looking at these targets and these, these objectives that they're going for. And they've teamed up, the governments have teamed up with their NOCs towards that common goal and objective. So as a result of all of that, we're seeing a lot more uh, foreign direct investments coming into the region, focusing on that segmentation. About $120 billion have been invested in 2020 alone from FDIs into that segment. And we're going to continue to see more and more involvement in the private sector, but that's going to be predicated on ensuring that the ecosystem continues to evolve around us. And what does the private sector need for it to be more involved? The private sector needs to respond to its constituents. Its constituents are really three. And they need to be driven by, by business um, business reasons for them to do all of these things. And the constituents being their investors slash shareholders, uh, their clientele slash, um, uh, you know, the, the, the people that purchase their products, and then their employees and how their employees look at all of these and how much they're incentivized and motivated for them to continue to, to, um, to buy product or, 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 or to be working in com companies that don't focus on renewables or focus on being ESG friendly, et cetera. And so the private sector has understood that that trajectory or that um, direction of travel is happening, but they're going to need to make sure that it's going to be economically viable for them to make these investments and that it is fits within their business needs and practices. So if you're a publicly listed company in the private sector, you need to respond to your share price and your share price will be impacted negatively if you're not producing profitability. So as such, the governments need to help make tax breaks help make you know, incentive schemes that are sitting in there to allow them to continue to look at renewables as a big area of focus for them and a big area for them to invest in. Also, we need to look at policies and policies need to be um, uh, enablers and allow people to have regulatory framework for them to be able to do these types of investments and to do it in a mass scale. You're going to need, you need, to, go, you're going to, need to also have uh, financial instruments that allow you to do these things. So green bonds, as an example, as well as you know, other financially enhanced products. And then there's going to be some enablers that, that the uh, MDBs will help provide by giving first stop guarantees, first stop loss guarantees, and allowing for more of that, uh, that, that type of investments to take place. The money is there, the ability is there, but you just need to have the framework, the ecosystem, the enablers, the, the, the legal um, setups for them to be able to do it in mass. Because if you think about where do we need to go from here, we're at a stage where about 120, $130 billion have been invested in emerging markets per year. We need to get to a trillion dollars per year if we're going to meet the objectives of getting to, to where we need to get to from a, from a global standpoint. And, and the GCC, more than anybody, is a leader in all of this, but it needs to continue to focus on these as a, as a, general, as, um, as a general ecosystem as well. Thank you, Mai, for this very comprehensive overview uh, of the outlook for renewables in the region. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you also for participating in our panel. Thank you.